We have an opportunity this morning to meet the first of our new mission partners. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be able to uh, introduce to you today Dennis Woodward. Dennis is the chaplain uh, for the mission to seafarers in Rotterdam. And I'm hoping that we can now bring uh, Dennis into the screen. Excellent. Really good to see you, Dennis. Hello. Good morning. Welcome, welcome all, and thank you for having me. Uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing Dennis for, for quite some time now. Um, but for those who haven't yet met you, Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about you and about the work that you're doing out in Rotterdam? Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, just maybe a, a, a little bit, actually. Andy and I met while I was training at uh, Ridley Hall in Cambridge. And so I was on placement uh, in uh, Trumpington, which was lovely. Uh, I liked it so much, I went on placement twice, actually, which was great. Um, and at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm chaplain to the port of Rotterdam. I work for an organization called the Mission to Seafarers. And so a big part of what I do is I visit ships. Um, and I try and support the seafarers uh, in the port of Rotterdam. Uh, the port of Rotterdam is, is Europe's biggest port. Uh, it, had, it has up to 100 seagoing vessel movements per day. Uh, and so there are many, many ships to visit. It's 43 kilometers long, many terminals. And so um, this is part of what I do. I try and bring the hope and love of Jesus Christ uh, to the ships that enter the port of Rotterdam. Uh, so it's a great, great privilege to do that. And as I'm speaking, my family will just say, briefly say hello. I hope that's okay. That'd be great. Say hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. This is my family. This is my family. So this is my uh, my uh, daughter Tessa, who's five and a half, um, and my son. Thank you for mentioning Thomas in your sermon. We like the name so much <laughs> that we actually named him after the biblical character of Thomas. He's Excellent. nearly two. Um, and then here's my wife, Anik, as well. Yeah, we won't share ages there. But, uh, <laughs> so it's lovely just to say, just to say hello. So we, we now live in, in Schiedam near Rotterdam in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. See, uh, they, they like the current weather so much, I can already see they have sand on their chin. So beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Playing yeah. outside. Okay, oh, <laughs> daddy, daddy will pick it up from here again, okay? Love you. Yes. Okay. See you, Andy. See you very <laughs> nice to see you. So, Dennis, um, I know that um, some of us have seen the Guardian article um, yes. that you were interviewed for about what's going on in Rotterdam during coronavirus. Can you tell us a little bit about how the current crisis uh, is affecting seafarers? Yes, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's affecting seafarers very much. Uh, so more than 90% of the world's trade uh, goes via sea. So we heavily depend on, on seafarers. There are about 1.7 million seafarers on board uh, 53,000 merchant vessels. Um, the current corona crisis, COVID-19, is having such an impact on seafarers because, understandably, um, shipping companies are nervous that, that corona might spread on board ships. And so what they've what they've tend to have done is they've extended contracts on board. Uh, now, uh, a big part of the seafaring population comes from countries like the Philippines, India, uh, Russia, Ukraine, Poland. Um, and so if you're, a, say, a Filipino seafarer and you're already on an eight or nine month contract as a rating, uh, I'm currently supporting a seafarer via WhatsApp and, and the 28th of this month will mean one year on board for him. So he's nearly been on board for a year. Um, this, in, in my opinion, is, is inhumane. Um, it, it, it just asks so much of the human body uh, i mean physically mentally uh, he's he's exhausted he has like myself uh, he has well he has a 6 year old daughter and every time they they uh, speak via message or whatsapp he has to tell his daughter that daddy will be home soon but he actually has no idea when that will be so it's 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 heartbreaking and and so during covid-19 um uh, it, the sort of two sides of the core coin is, is one side is yes shipping companies are anxious to get COVID-19 on board their ships the other side is that port states are also very cautious 
of allowing people on board. And, and so for me, it's been very difficult to get access on board uh, ships as a port chaplain. And, and so there's two sides. It's both the shipping companies and the port state. So um, with this individual, it's been very challenging as they were sailing on an oil tanker around the Mediterranean. None of the, com none of the countries that they called wanted him. Uh, so he wasn't allowed to disembark. Uh, so that, that's, that's a real issue. And he represents one of many. So at the moment, they're estimating about 150,000 seafarers are stuck. Wow. Um, yeah. Dennis, I, there's lots of questions that I'd love yeah, to ask yeah, you, actually. Yeah. And I look forward to a time uh, when lockdown is over, when we can invite you to join us uh, for Sunday morning at Christchurch. Um, Thank you. Is there one thing or a couple of things in particular that you'd like us to pray for for you at the moment and for the work that you're doing? Thank you. First of all, can I just say thank you so much for, for picking us as a mission partner. This is a real privilege, not the least. Uh, yeah, I know. I know Andy as well, and it's it's been a, a great uh, privilege for me to to learn from him while I was going through my ordination training at Ridley in Cambridge, and so I'm I'm very thankful that we can uh, rekindle this this relationship this way. And thank you for your your prayers uh, and your generosity in this. This is this is truly wonderful. Um, I think at this time, if you can pray for continued access to the ships while, of course, taking all the necessary precautions. So the Port of Rotterdam uh, Authority, which is a big company, has now supplied us with um, disposable gloves and, and, and face masks. Um, this, this only came last Wednesday, might I add. Corona came to the Netherlands on the 27th of February. And so uh, it does feel we're, we're behind the curve somewhat, but we, we have these supplies. And so I'm, I'm keen to, uh, to still to be able to support crews. And so um, if you can pray for continued access uh, and, and that we can continue to support seafarers, uh, that, that would be wonderful. Um, it's... it's I've, I've been able to, to hand out uh, uh, toiletries to seafarers, even medicines at one point for a seafarer who needed vital medication. And the other day, even water for a ship that was running out of drinking water. And so if we can continue to, to do those stuff as well as bring Bibles on board, pray for people. Um, they love our daily bread. Many Filipino seafarers are Catholic. Uh, and so this, this is a, a great joy, but just for doors to remain open. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, let's pray now, Dennis, and then Patience, uh, who's leading our intercessions, will also pick up some prayer for seafarers in general. Let's thank pray. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling Dennis to this work in Rotterdam and for the work of missions to seafarers worldwide. We pray that in these particularly challenging times, doors will remain open, that it might still be possible to reach these crews with uh, practical support, uh, with spiritual support, and with your love. We ask for your blessing upon Dennis and his family at this time, and we pray for this new partnership for Christchurch, that in our support uh, for missions to seafarers, we may learn more of your love for the world, and that we may be a strong source of support and prayer for Dennis in his work. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dennis. And uh, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.